this video series, we will demonstrate the components of a rheumatology knee exam, beginning with a brief overview of knee anatomy. The knee consists of four bones, the femur proximally, the tibia and fibula distally, and the patella floating anteriorly. The femur articulates with the tibia to form the tibiofemoral joint, while the patella articulates with the femur to form the patellofemoral joint. Within the joint itself, layers of cartilage and C-shaped menisci are present to aid in smoothness of movement and stability. Also assisting in stability are four ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament, lateral collateral ligament, and medial collateral ligament, as well as an overlaying synovial joint capsule and several bursae. Relevant muscles and tendinous structures anteriorly include the quadriceps, sartorius, gracilis, and IT band. Relevant posterior muscles include the hamstrings and gastrocnemius, as well as the plantaris and popliteus muscles within the popliteal fossa. With these anatomical structures in mind, we can begin our examination of the patient starting with inspection. Begin with the patient walking normally from one end of the examination room or hallway, turn around and walk back, ensuring that the patient uses any gait aids as needed. Observe the fluidity, length, and symmetry of their strides, as well as the smoothness with which they turn around. Stiff, short strides with asymmetry, such as an antalgic gait or limp, may indicate somebody with significant pain or mobility restriction. Next, from the front or back, observe the knees to see if they remain in line with the patient's hip and ankle throughout their stride, or whether they buckle inwards or outwards, which may indicate weakness or loss of joint integrity. Make sure to inspect the ankle and hip as well, as dysfunction in these joints can lead to knee complaints. With gait inspection complete, we can next move on to general inspection. Inspection of the knee joint begins with the patient in standing with the knee exposed. Ensure to inspect the knee both from the front, from the side, as well as from the back and compare to the contralateral knee. Begin by observing for swelling, which is typically appreciated as a loss of normal indentation along the anteromedial side of the knee or as a ballooning above the patella and can be present in injuries or rheumatologic conditions. Next, observe for any erythema which may indicate underlying inflammation or infection. Then, observe for any muscular atrophy, which is usually seen in the quadriceps or hamstring muscles. Next, observe for any deformity, which can include curving of the knee outwards, known as genu verum, or inwards, known as genu valgum, or curving of the knee backwards, known as genu recurvatum, or the presence of a Baker's cyst in the popliteal fossa at the back of the knee. Lastly, observe for any scars or other skin changes, as these may indicate past surgeries or other rheumatologic conditions. With inspection complete, we can next move on to palpation. To start, have your patient in supine or seated with their knee extended and supported. Start by using the outside of your palm or the back of your hand to feel for the temperature of the knee, which should be cool to the touch and symmetrical to the other knee. Next, palpate bony landmarks, including the medial and lateral borders of the patella, as well as the patellar apex and base. From there, feel the medial and lateral epicondyles of the femur, the medial and lateral condyles of the tibia, and the joint line that lies between them, including where the MCL and the LCL span. Continue down the tibia to palpate the tibial tuberosity anteriorly and the head of the fibula laterally. Moving back up, palpate the patellar tendon and the quadriceps muscles anteriorly and then the pes anserine insertion medially on the tibia. Next, palpate the hamstring muscles and tendons, the gastrocnemius muscle, and the popliteal fossa posteriorly, especially looking for the presence of a Baker's cyst. With palpation of the knee complete, we can next move on to range of motion. Begin with the patient in supine on the examination bed. In most cases, approximating the patient's range of motion to normal values and comparing side to side is sufficient. First, have the patient bring their heel towards their buttock and in doing so, bending their knee to test flexion. Normally, patients will have 135 degrees of flexion or will be able to fully eliminate the gap between their thigh and lower leg. Next, have the patient fully straighten their knee, normally which is zero degrees, but can be upwards of 10 degrees of hyperextension in some individuals. 
If the patient's active range of motion is limited in any of these movements, make sure to test their passive range of motion as well. With range of motion complete, we next move on to special testing. To begin, have the patient in supine or sitting with their knee fully extended, supported, and relaxed. Next, with one hand, support the back of the patient's knee. Then use the other hand to sweep up the anterior medial side of the knee, just medial to the patella, a few times with firm pressure in order to move any intraarticular fluid away from the medial portion of the joint capsule. Then quickly sweep your hand down the anterior lateral aspect of the knee, just lateral to the patella, to shift the fluid back into the medial compartment. A positive test will yield a sweeping fullness or bulging appearing in the groove just medial to the patella during the lateral sweep of the knee, indicating the presence of a small or moderate sized effusion. To begin, have the patient in supine or sitting with their knee fully extended, supported, and relaxed. With one hand, cup the anterior portion of the patient's thigh proximal to the knee and swipe downward several times to move any intraarticular fluid underneath the patella. After a few sweeps, firmly hold this cup position proximal to the patella. With the other hand, gently tap on the patella. Normally, no movement in the patella will be appreciated. However, a positive test will yield the sensation that the patella is bouncing up and down with the tapping motion and palpably clicking when contacting the underlying femur, indicating a moderate or significant knee effusion. To begin, have the patient in supine or sitting with their knee fully extended, supported, and relaxed. With one hand, position your thumb and forefinger in the groove on either side of the superior aspect of the patella, and with your other hand, position your thumb and forefinger in the groove on either side of the inferior aspect of the patella. With one hand, gently squeeze the joint space between your thumb and forefinger and feel for a reciprocal bulging with your other thumb and forefinger. Alternate which hand is squeezing and which is feeling. A positive test will yield a palpable bulging that shifts with alternating squeezing. This may suggest that there is a small or moderate sized effusion present in the knee. The anterior drawer test is used to determine the laxity or integrity of the anterior cruciate ligament within the knee. While not often applicable in most rheumatology assessments, it's important to highlight some special considerations when performing this test and other similar tests on rheumatology patients. Begin with the patient in supine with their knee bent to 90 degrees with their foot flat on the examination bed. Next, with one hand on either side, grasp around the patient's lower leg, just distal to the bend of the knee, such that your fingers can push directly on the back of the patient's tibia. Next, use one forearm to firmly stabilize the patient's lower leg and foot, just proximal to their ankle. Typically, the examiner would sit on the patient's foot to stabilize. However, this is not advised in rheumatology patients as they may have tender joints in their foot and ankle. Once in position, use your hands to attempt to pull the patient's tibia forward. A positive test will yield a tibia that translates forward to great extent with lack of a firm end feel on the motion. Ensure to always compare to the patient's other knee. Similar to the anterior drawer test, Lachman's test is used to determine the laxity or integrity of the anterior cruciate ligament within the knee. While not often applicable in most rheumatology assessments, it's important to be familiar with this test as it has a better sensitivity for detecting a torn ACL than the anterior drawer test. Begin with the patient in supine on the examination bed with their knee flexed to 30 degrees and their hamstrings relaxed. As the examiner, you can put your knee underneath the patient's leg to help support their knee if needed. With your outside hand, stabilize the patient's thigh just proximal to the knee, and with your inside hand, grasp the patient's tibia with your fingers posterior and your thumb on the tibial tuberosity anterior. Next, with your inside hand, apply a forward pulling force to the tibia. A positive test will yield a tibia that translates forward to a great extent with lack of a firm end feel on the motion. Ensure to always compare it to the patient's other knee. Varus and valgus testing seeks to determine the integrity or laxity of the lateral collateral ligament or LCL and the medial collateral ligament or MCL respectively. Begin with the patient in supine on the examination bed. For both varus and valgus testing, be sure to test the knee both at full extension and at 30 degrees of flexion, ensuring to provide support to the thigh and knee either with a pillow or by hanging the patient's leg partially off the bed. To start, we will test the LCL using varus forceps. With one hand, stabilize the medial aspect of the patient's thigh, just proximal to the knee. With the other hand, apply gentle but firm inwards force to the lateral aspect of the patient's lower leg, just proximal to the ankle, ensuring to apply a counter force with your first hand. 
The resulting force will apply a varus stress to the patient's knee, thus testing the LCL. Repeat the same process with the knee now in 30 degrees of flexion. Next, to test the MCL using valgus forces, switch the positions of your hands such that the first hand is now in the lateral aspect of the patient's thigh, and your second hand is now applying a similar outward force to the medial aspect of the patient's lower leg, such that a valgus stress results. Similarly, repeat this in 30 degrees of flexion as well. In either position, for both forces, a positive test will yield a significant amount of sideways bending in the knee with a lack of a firm end feel. Ensure to always compare to the patient's other knee. Thank you.